Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Conquer the Clutter. It's the 1st of November, and uh, thank you all for being here. And I hope that Boundaries and Limits uh, and what you learn through this series, which is connected to codependence. All right, remember, uh, the lack of Boundaries and Limits doesn't mean you're codependent. But if you have codependent tendencies in your relationships, it does mean that you're not setting the boundaries and lim limits that you need. <clears throat> so today's uh, topic is, okay, boundaries and limits, what are they? We did that. What is the cost? Why put the effort? Because it's not an easy thing um, to learn to make yourself set that boundary and limit in the moment, all right? What is the cost of not having healthy boundaries and limits? Sooner or later, the most likely cost is burnout, all right? And burnout is exactly the same as that O word we talk about all the time, which is overwhelmed, all right? And knowing that boundaries, though, are the cure to that sense of being overwhelmed and then burned out. And it's just a matter of time. I'm not trying to scare you, just trying to get you to realize there is a benefit to putting the work in when you start to realize you feel uncomfortable. Boundaries or being overwhelmed happen when we become one of or the combination of emotionally, mentally, physically, and or spiritually exhausted. Okay? It's like a psychic exhaustion. Now, when I refer to spiritually, I'm not necessarily talking about in a religious context. Your, your faith, your belief, that is your, your right and your purview. Burnout or overwhelmed, however, is going to lead to a few other things that I want to raise the red flag about. And that is, you may only be at the stage of being chronically frustrated, chronically resulting in neglecting your priorities. Why? Because when you feel consistently, repeatedly frustrated. It, it's like having a slow leak. And it does create sooner or later, and sooner rather than later, mood changes in us, all right? Now those mood changes create avoidance because mood changes are like um, opening the front door on a cold day and turning up the thermostat to compensate. Not the right adjustment we need to make. And sooner or later, when we're not getting it right, we realize that. Whether we can put it into words or not, we do realize it. And what do you do when you start to get repeatedly or consistently frustrated? The healthy response, not a good response, is not to keep banging your head against a stone wall, but it is to avoid. That is a healthier compromise rather than continuing to do what isn't working, expecting different results. However, that avoidance starts to not be temporary, all right? Now the avoidance and the burnout overwhelmed escalate the level of stress that you're under, right? Have we not talked enough about stress right? and what the cost is to each and every one of us? Now that stress, remember all the work and talk we did about the brain. Everybody thinks the brain runs the show. The brain doesn't run the show. Basically, it is a sorting process for what have you habituated? What is your most likely uh, response to a situation that has certain criteria? It's like an assessment tool, all right? And what did Susie, what did Joe, 
most likely go to as a response that they found satisfying enough. And it pulls that one out and it offers those ideas to you. And it offers those ideas to you in the form of just like stress does, all right? Just like burnout does, just like overwhelm does, neurological, so firing synapses in your brain, and, and sooner or later, physiological shifts. Now, the physiological shifts, what are they? I've asked you before, where when you start to feel overwhelmed or stressed, do you personally, uniquely start to feel that shift? What is the part of, most of us don't pick it up early enough when it's just, you know, synapses firing in our brain. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little bit of a frog in my throat. Um, but the physiological, you can head this off at the pass. If you start to do a body scan, all right, when you think it's just, I don't know, it's just, I, just not right. You stop right then, put yourself on pause. Best thing you can do if something isn't working is right away. Don't wait until you're down the road over the, looking at the side of the cliff. All right, right away, put yourself on pause and do a body scan. And look for the physiological shifts because that is your first alert system. And that is a friend. That is the thing if you become aware of where uniquely for you that registers first, you can head off wasting a lot of energy and encountering and developing a lot of disappointment. Because our body, in our body, we encounter are triggers, all right? Now they can be kind of the first alert triggers or they can be run for cover uh, triggers depending on how long you let that get a hold of you and keep a hold of you. Burnout heavily influences us. Do you know what it heavily influences us to do? It's something we don't do. Burnout heavily influences us not to know when to say no. Why? Because we probably have allowed ourselves to get into an overwhelmed state. When you're overwhelmed, you're not picking up the signals. You're fighting a bushfire inside yourself. All right. The other thing it does is it kind of distracts us enough that even if we're prompted to set a boundary, when we let ourselves get in a burnout, overwhelmed, stress state, we can't figure out how to say no. The skills we have, they don't disappear, but they become incapacitated. We don't have the likelihood, not, not every time, but the highest likelihood is we're not even effectively using the skills we already have. Can you see how important it is to respect your feelings, your reactions? Put yourself on pause, take a breath, take a step back and ask yourself, what is going on? So to compensate, if we don't get a handle on that, we can resort to other um, adaptations, all right? One of those adaptations that many of you have talked to me about is people pleasing. Anybody out here a people pleaser? All right. Any anybody out here the first person to find humor and make a joke of it uh, rather than deal with it? Mm -hmm. The most extreme version of people pleasing is called the and, and we've talked a little bit, quite a bit about people pleasing. So I wanted to kind of up the game a little bit. It's called the superhero syndrome. Do you ever hear yourself saying, it's okay, I can do it all. Now, we don't generally add that all word, all right? Because that kind of is like in a little bit of an alarm system. That's just not logical. But we can say, no, I can do it. So we remove the all 
so that we can move forward. All right, now, when we resort to people pleasing, we are usually, okay, setting ourselves up to accept and actually aspire. We are considering the likelihood that we will take on or continue taking on, even when we find ourselves up to our hubcaps, unrealistic expectations. Another way to get burned out and overwhelmed is what even when we do that, <clears throat> not being appreciated for what we do, right? When we're not appreciated for what we do, we can we one response, and it's not an uncommon one is to keep trying harder and harder and harder and harder to please, not knowing when to say no. And despite knowing the fact that we're already kind of running on our toes and that we're busy, anybody out there, anybody out there doing this, we can make Absolute of all the things we're planning to do, it isn't even on the horizon to be able to take a step back and do less. It's almost like you're running on your toes and losing your balance, and all there is is forward movement. All right, you don't take the, the time to say, Wait and rebalance. Why am I the only one with my hands dirty? Why am I the only one speaking up? And instead, all right, instead, we drive ourselves to continue. Now, sometimes we're telling ourselves, I'm, I just need to keep going to finish, to complete this. But when you're on empty, you're on empty. All right, it's okay. And we try harder and harder and harder and harder, either to keep our word to somebody else or to please because it's easier to please than it is to confront. How many people find it easier to buy peace by people pleasing, by agreeing, all right? Or just setting that boundary and doing a reboot, okay? How many people here find down the road that they've actually set themselves up for being on what I call autopilot. You're not even, you don't even have your hands on the equipment any longer. You're not driving the bus. The bus is carrying you to the next obligation. Is there sometimes too, and is there anybody out there doing this? I want to, I want to give you an alert. All right. That, as you're moving forward, you've lost track of what it's doing to you, what it's costing you, all right? And you're even adding other activities. You've lost track, all right? I see some nods there. And have those activities, once you've given your word, mm, be careful, have they actually become then obligations? You feel obliged, okay, because you gave your word, because you know how, because you can, because you have 15 minutes left in your day, all right? So you're going to take on a 45-minute obligation habitually, all right? Now, priorities um, happen, and the priorities of each upcoming day, remember, all right, you're, you're not in, we, none of us is in control of what today or tomorrow is going to send us. We have to leave time and space and energy for the un, unknown, the unpredicted. So now you're on autopilot or now you are obliging yourself. Now you are people pleasing. Now you are over committing, all right? You're going as fast as you can. Or even if you're not going as fast as you can, you're using up all of the energy you have. And at the end, you feel ugh, depleted. Well, you're on a high, all right, because that's what adrenaline does. But when the adrenaline stops, 
you sink like a stone. How many people out there do that? Okay. Priorities of each day are going to get added. Okay, know that. And we can be especially vulnerable even on at our busiest time because are we susceptible to somebody needing something? And we don't consider, it's not selfishness, it's assessment. It's just assessment of, can I help? And if I can, how much can I help? And even if it's a little more than I, I should help, I'm going to extend myself a bit. Okay. But not enough and not habitually that we empty ourselves. Not to the point where we seem to lose track of where we are and what we're doing to ourselves. Sometimes... Okay, something is just too good an opportunity to miss. Sometimes we're not doing it for someone else. Sometimes we're overextending ourselves because we see the possibilities in something. How many people here are creative or have what I call the engineer's brain? You see something and it triggers you to think of what you could do with it what you could make out of it, how you could fix that, how you could fill in the blank. How many people are creative, artistic, imaginative? That's the engineer's brain, okay? Okay, and so not wanting to miss out, we take that on too. If you have a susceptibility to that characteristic, to that mindset, be careful. You really need to manage um, what your obligations are to every day. All right. So how many people out here, when you find that you have overcommitted, I'm interested in this one. Okay. Never even consider asking for additional support. So when I took on this responsibility in Mississauga, I looked at it. I knew it would be tough. I knew it would kind of take me out of my normal environment with the supports that I have for an extended period of time. And I knew there'd be a cost. All right. But I made very clear that this was not a one person job, all right? And so right out of the gate, I knew enough because I do have to work on the same things you have to work on. We are all tempted, all right? It's not a one person job. How many people here when they find themselves overextended, even when they are talking about their own obligations, their own responsibilities, actually are comfortable when you get that first whiff of, wow, this is bigger than I realized. What was I thinking? Actually feel entitled to ask for support. And how many here have been that support for someone else but you wouldn't ask for it for yourself. Anybody? I want you to put that in the chat box because I want a reading on that. That may be, maybe superhero syndrome needs to be the topic of a future podcast. If you don't ask for that additional support, no, there's only one ending. And that is you are carrying the entire load. All right. So right now, stop and consider everybody out there. All right. What is your maximum load? When do you know enough is enough? 
And does it register? All right, does it register upstream soon enough because you don't feel like you've almost been wiped out? How empty are you by the time you let your body, your mind, your energy tell you we're in trouble here? Okay, we are very soon going to be running on a deficit. Mm -hmm. What is your maximum load? And are you factoring in all aspects of your load? All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to take out your papers and pen, because this is not just a talk exercise, this podcast. It's actually a reflection and a little bit of personal work. And in bullet format, okay, list what you, I'm going to give you a minute. Okay, what do you have to do, have to do Monday coming up, Tuesday coming up, Wednesday coming up, see where I'm going with this, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday coming up, take a minute. Have you had a minute? Okay, I've got head shakes. Okay. What do you have to do? Now, as an exercise, if you're really not good at foreseeing what the load is and you kind of have an ad hoc uh, approach to it that, oh, you just as the day comes, it'll... Un unveil itself do you think this week you'd be willing starting today until next wednesday and when you come next wednesday come with your list i think a google calendar if you use a, an electronic calendar i think a google calendar of just making entries on a day all right let you see how full and how big the incoming actually is. And it might be a good exercise just to help you stop because so many people are visual. If you can see it, then you can appreciate it more. And it's like an alert system. You know, whatever day I want to help you, that day is gone. And all obligations, too, and all entries won't require the same commitment. They won't, they won't require the same energy. And know that Wednesday, all right, your energy is probably not going to be the same as it's going to be on Friday or Saturday. Why? Because you've had four or five days worth of activities as well as the unknowns getting thrown into the mix. How many people here? I've got 33 people present. All right. How many people here, hands up, would be willing to do that little exercise, that little self-awareness exercise? And it doesn't have to be an electron. I find electronic calendars really useful. I love my Google. And I'm not technical at all. Believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, my joke, my, and it isn't a joke, is I went into social work for a reason. Okay, I hate machines. Um, and technology is a T word um, that isn't there somebody else here present who can make this thing work. All right, that's my aspiration to technology. So if I can do it, you can do it, believe me. It looks harder than it is. Pick whatever format works for you, though, so that you're comfortable. It's available, and you will do it. All right. Now, I want to add one more thing, and that is, if you can, all right, 
put a little star beside at the end of every day. Take like, I'm talking five, 10 minutes, all right? And on top of the things you were obliged to do, with a little star beside them, add the things that lob themselves in. And, and into the day. And then I want you to put an H beside them if they were high energy consumers. M moderate energy consumers, L, low energy consumers, that they will all consume some energy. Don't lie to yourself, okay? And just see why you're overwhelmed, why you feel stuck, all right? Just see that. You've got to stop blaming yourself. You've got to stop undermining your own self-esteem and your own confidence. And you need to start looking at things as they actually are factually. We have feelings, but feelings aren't facts. They are to be observed. They are to be experienced. They are to be respected, but they are not facts. All right. So let's get the facts, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. There was some police show, cop show somewhere that said, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Okay, so back to, back to today. All right, now, one more entry, okay? And that is, on each day, put a little heart symbol and put what you did that day to add to your own replenishment of energy. I personally, all right, like to sit on the, on the Chesterfield in the kitchen and cuddle my dogs. I personally like to ask people I know really, really, really well, I could use a hug, all right? I personally like to sit down and figure out how I ended up up to my knees in something that I didn't see and make a commitment to myself. I'm going to watch out for that tendency in myself or that thing that I don't give enough warning bellness to. Okay. And we all have repeats of that. We all have repeats of that, right? Everything on that list takes energy, right? When do you let yourself and how do you let yourself catch your breath? How do you even do something that would even qualify as reasonable self-care? Because if you don't, do a tad of it, at least a tad of it, every single day, all you're doing is emptying your system as you meet the obligations of tomorrow, as well as whatever surprise gets lobbed in. What do you have planned this week before, say, next Wednesday? that is a fill, fill the tank activity. It doesn't have to be that big. It doesn't have to be that big. Sometimes the fill the tank activity can be something as mundane, but as really effective as sitting down and reflecting. And not, not as in looking back on the positives and negatives, but knowing yourself a little better. Just every day, because we change every day. We are not the same person we were yesterday. Whatever happened in our life has changed us. Maybe 
hopefully not profoundly in a negative way, but it, we're changed every day. We come to ourselves a slightly different person. We're either smarter, wiser, or tireder. Tireder is repeat, 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 repeat. All right. What are we repeat, 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 repeating? And what is it actually creating for ourselves and for others? Okay. Now, when it comes to self care, replenishing the energy, are we expecting ourselves to use? something that doesn't actually exist and isn't available to us? What was the plan? Another scale that people, uh, many people use is not knowing in, in a situation, not knowing exactly how to say no and not wanting to seem rude. Hmm? Why? Why would that be a concern or a fear? It's a common one. Sometimes when we feel things so intensely and we know we need to set a boundary and a limit, sometimes we back away from our own feelings, all right? Because we feel them so intensely in the moment that we're afraid we're going to blurt something out, all right? And say it wrong. We can't actually figure out how to say no. We know we need to, but we don't actually have it figured out. Having a few standbys is a good thing. All right. Something like, hmm, I hear you. I'll have to think about that. Hmm, hmm. I hear you. Make eye contact when you say that. Okay, I hear you. I'm not sure where I stand on that. I have to think about it. Or if you really know right out of the gate, this is a non-starter. I hear you, but I'm not comfortable with that. So at this point, if I have to make a decision right now for you, because you need one, it would have to be a no. Don't say I can't, because that opens up the discussion for why. Never justify. Never explain. Never justify until you are never justify at all period all right you don't you're never required to justify something when someone's trying to put you or inadvertently put you on the defensive just say something like hmm it's hard to say which is ab which is the absolute truth if you think about it all right mm, that's hard to say mm, i'd have to think about that but when, when you feel yourself being put on the defensive, stop. Stop. Say, well, hmm, interesting. Somebody years ago, okay, taught me that. The best pause word, I think personally, is to look the person in the eye, look a little perplexed, like, hmm, Interesting. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. It just covers a hundred different ways not to end up getting pulled into something. And then you can go away and think about it. And once it's a considered decision, you're all adults. All right. You're all adults. You'll know what to do. If you feel pressured, however, like somehow it's just off balance. Like I said, in this situation that I'm helping with right now, negotiate for how much you can contribute. This isn't a one person job. I'd like to help, but I don't see that as a one person job. Who else? When you find 
other people, another person, other people to help come back and maybe we can talk about it more. Right? Okay. And do that, please. Practice that. Try it. Try it in your own words, especially when it's been your nature to want to do it all. You have a kind and loving, energetic heart. All right. Is it time, do you think, to learn that it's okay to not do it all, even if you can do it all? It can be especially challenging, you know, to take the first step and begin to convince yourself. That can be the harder step forward. To begin to convince yourself to take the time you need and ask yourself, is there a situation right now? And maybe we do this right now. Maybe we do a little ad hoc reflection. Is there a situation right? Sorry. Is there a situation right now? All right, that you're facing currently, that you believe that needs doing. With that handy dandy paper and pen. Would you write it down? Why? Why is that situation currently so necessary to do? Why? I'll take a second and wait. Why is it a priority? Why does it have to be a priority? People are still looking down at their papers. Okay, so now, I hope you are anyway, and you're not reading a book. <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me, would you? No. Okay, so now I'd like you to challenge your mind. You know that part that heavily believes this is an absolute priority? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Let's see. Now I'd like you to challenge your mind to consider, are there any other reasonable reasons that it doesn't actually need to be done as the priority it feels that it is? What would be so terrible if it wasn't that much of a priority? It may still need to be done, but how quickly, how involuntarily, how automatically do you consider something and make it a priority? When you're considering this right now, this, this situation in the moment, how many people, how many out there of our, of our community went very quickly to the thought, whether it's priority or not, and to do it anyway, right? Because it's just easier. It's just easier to do it. I don't want to do it. It's not like I'm really looking forward to it. And I wish I didn't have to do it. It would be great to be able to sit down and read a book or do something else, go for a walk. Get your walks in before the snow falls. Um, just do it because it's easier, right? Sometimes. But not habitually. We can't look at everything that comes into the to-do list and make it a priority. And how many times do we tell ourselves, oh, just do it. it it's easier. Now, I know I advocate for when you've got something in your hand and you'd like to just put it down, right? You don't actually want to wipe down the counter and put away the dishes. You don't, you don't actually want to empty the dishwasher, all right? And I say, just do it now. It never gets easier. I'm talking about a small, doable, in-your-face, in-your-hand activity rather than putting it down and making it a bigger job later. 
That's how I want that applied. That's what I'm coaching you to. That is not about applying that principle to everything. Oh, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. It's just easier. But when you're actually either running on empty or you don't have a lot of steam in the tank or when you really look at it, it isn't that much of a priority. Could you do less of that thing, a part of that thing, and some self-care and some self-replenishment? Because another pitfall to getting burned out and overwhelmed is always repeatedly, habitually prioritizing the other over yourself. The other's need instead of your need. Like somehow only one can, can have the good stuff. Sometimes it's okay to parse it out and everybody gets a little bit including you, on a regular habitual basis, that's okay. You should at least be equal to whatever the priority is, unless the house is on fire, there's projectile vomiting or a femoral bleed. Okay, those are the three exceptions. All right. The other's need is not, 99% of the time, nothing terrible is going to happen. Okay. Their need, it's a person, a thing, a job, a whatever. When you're running on empty, all right, their need is not necessarily greater than yours. On that daily to-do list, I wish I had my to-do list here. Um, on your daily to-do list, okay, is there anything included that is akin to 15 minutes of relaxing? 15 minutes of reconnecting with yourself. Remember every single day. When was the last day that everybody, each and every person here, all right, went and found, made it their business to find joy, fun, and play? Reminding yourself that you are a learning, growing, developing human being. How are you going to learn, grow, and develop today? What energy, what time, what focus, what priority do you make that? And it is not at the exclusion of the work that needs to be done. It's a question of balance. Because if today, God willing, it's not true, all right? But if today was the last day you were going to be on this earth or I was going to be on this earth, does that priority really mean it got your last best effort? Treat every day like it could be. It could be your last. And not in a doom and gloom, but in a precious way. That's why it's so important every day to squeeze out the work that needs to be done, the priorities in proportion to Reminding yourself you're not stagnating. Today, you should not be the person exactly that you were yesterday. You may have learned something. You may have had a challenge that taught you something. You may know someone else, build a relationship with yourself or with someone else. And every single day, right 
no matter where you are, no matter how good a day it is, no matter how bad a day it is, or somewhere in between, there is joy sitting there waiting for you. There is something today that is joyful. There is something today that is fun. Find it. Make yourself laugh. Make yourself pleased. Make yourself appreciate and be grateful. And don't let the kid in you become a grumpy bossy boots to yourself. Okay, play. What is play for you? And there needs to even be a little tiny bit of that. Find it. That's what keeps you you. That's what keeps you energized. So just like the old adage, put your own mask on first. I, every day I'm trying to coach you. Every day it's not about the clutter. Every day it is about the balance of joy, fun, play, learning and reminding yourself you are a growing, learning, developing human being. You are changing and developing for the better. And there is just that boring old work that needs to be done too. And when you're writing down your priorities, your obligations for each day this week, and then what self-care, you know, you set up, did you follow through? What I'm really trying to get you to see is what would it take for you to actually plan and take responsibility for trying your best to make each and every day more balanced, more balanced, so that you come out of it with meaning. You come out of it with preserved self-esteem. And you don't use the last of the energy you have because just consider how much energy it takes to get through every day. And it doesn't have to be a profound amount. Okay. Whatever we do, including avoid, <laughs> how many people have found themselves sometimes avoiding? All right. Well, that takes energy too. All right. It takes energy to avoid. All right. So were you planning, where are you planning to get that energy from? Even if you're avoiding, all right, where are you planning to get that energy from? Don't dig a hole for yourself. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen to yourself. How many people right here? Because the energy will always be there. It will be. It won't be true energy. It won't be true energy. All right. You make yourself feel bad enough. You make yourself feel guilty enough. You make yourself feel mm, 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 whatever, sort of running on your tippy toes, going so fast. How many people here have ever experienced running on adrenaline? I see a lot of nods, a lot of nods. Okay. How many people, even if you're not running on adrenaline, find yourself going there? regular you don't stay there but you go there when you're feeling that adrenaline that's when you know you're at your limit mm -hmm. where did you think you were going to get the energy if you do that all right that's survival where were you planning on getting the energy to take care of yourself not even necessarily in any profound self-care way just setting boundaries so that you are in your space. Nothing else is taking up your legitimate right to the space that's yours, mind, body, spirit, energy. All right. And where in heaven's name were you going to get the energy, which is sometimes a little harder to reinforce healthy boundaries. To set them is one thing. To reinforce them, you already have some pressure or conflict when you're reinforcing them. And to maintain them. 
where are you going to get that energy? Do you see that you're setting in motion? And how can you see that it practically dictates that the feelings you don't want to have, those feelings that aren't good for you, and they're certainly not good for your relationships with yourself or others, but processing those feelings takes energy. So the more you let permeate that, and you have boundaries, maybe you're not setting them, maybe you're not um, voicing them, but every time you feel put upon, every time you feel that's not right, something has just permeated your a legitimate boundary of yours. And processing the feelings takes energy. So for more productive goals, all right, what would you say is the main focus for each of the days of the week you listed? What would the main focus be? Would it not be, first and foremost, self-preservation? Not ending up in a worse state by the end of the day than you started out so that tomorrow you can even approach the next day with any type of balance? And where, where are you going to get the energy to meet your own needs? What do I need? Where is it? And how do I get enough of it to make enough of a difference? And those three questions are always answerable. They're always answerable. Not to say that you can get everything you need of the need you have met, but you can always make a deposit to fulfilling that need. And while you're asking yourself that question, this list in your mind, on the paper, in the Google Calendar, are you on the list? When was the last time, honestly and truly, you put yourself on the list? Because repeating a plan that empties you is never going to be helpful. Never. How many people here today do it anyway. And in what forms do you do it? Right now, let's stop and take out that paper and pen. In, and write down, please, as many as you can, what form does it take when you don't show up for yourself, you are not on the priority list of your day. And you don't necessarily, your needs, depending on the day, don't necessarily have to be that you're always at the top. This is not about narcissism. This is not about uh, selfishness. This is not about anything negative. This is about, I count. I count. So in what forms do you empty yourself? Now, in what form do you protect yourself reliably from doing it? Emptying yourself, running on empty, keep going, end up overwhelmed, end up burned out, feeling burnout, low mood, discouraged, overwhelmed. In what forms do you protect yourself? And are any of those forms related to avoidance? Is more 
and more and more and more each day to any extent people pleasing in your mind do you have an other could be somebody who's deceased the rules you know the committee that's people pleasing they just aren't sitting around tangibly in your environment but they're still there calling the shots Are there actual people just to buy peace? Or legitimately, in a positive way, you know, you love this person. And it's not to say you don't love the other people, but they're in your space. You're the one who calls the shots. To what extent does people pleasing in some form, all right, leave you with so little energy left in the tank that Avoidance is your best option. Well, it's practically all you leave left over for yourself. Is that possible? Now, you know what? You might never believe this, but when you look at the definition and description, to what degree do you aspire to what I referred to above? And that is to some degree, even in your mind, when you're looking at the clutter of the superhero syndrome. Because it's all got to be about you getting it done, right? Really? Okay. Are you saying to yourself, you know, I can do it all. Is there anybody here saying, I should do it all? If you put I should do it all as opposed to I can do it all, what are the reasons that you should do it all? Because every single part of that clutter, of course, is you, right? Every single bit of it. Last time, I promise. Keep that pen and paper handy. This time, if you would, write down three reasons why pleasing the other is the better choice over yourself repeatedly. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes stuff gets ahead of us. And sometimes we do have to play catch up out of respect for the other. I run into that frequently with people where they live with another person and things have gotten to a point where the threshold for clutter and chaos in the other person, their right to some level of calm and peace and tranquility has been taken away. And yes, okay. We work on reclaiming, lowering the level of clutter and chaos. But still in a way that each day is balanced. Joy, fun, and play. Learning, growing, developing human being. And in equal portion, whatever else you're giving most of your time and effort to, an equal portion to self-care. Self-care in the form of either preserving your energy or increasing your energy. And here are some things on a closing note that I want you to watch out for. It's that little voice. You know that little voice that's kind of in the background and it says, Oh, it's just easier. Do it. It's just easier. And it's not the thing in your hand that you're not going to make the job bigger. It's something like, okay, all right. It'll only take a half hour. Okay. Or no, I should do it because I'm the only one who knows how to do it right. Or the other person 
they won't do it, right? So by default, I need to do it instead. Listen, listen to yourself. When that little voice, that little saboteur starts talking to you on the committee, maybe you voiced over somebody's voice on the committee, okay? Because you weren't born with that message. You pick that one up somewhere. Don't make it your own. All right. And know this. No one. Not you. Not me. The best and the worst of us. All right. No one can do it. all. So stop trying. If you need help, get the help you need. Get the job done. Get it off your back. And do it before you're burned out and you're so overwhelmed, you're going in circles. You take care and I will see you next week. Have, have a great week, everybody. Make it a great week. Bye.